All I know is this violates every canon of respectable broadcasting. How are you? Hey, who wants to help me get this reporter out of here? I need some muscle over here. You are listening to Blame Your Brother. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone back from a week off from Thanksgiving. We're back once again, Blame Your Brother, episode 118. That's amazing, as usual. And we're here on Thursday nights, like we always are, at blameyourbrother.tv. So come hang out with us as we record this show. And tonight, big night. We'll get to that in just a second, but we got to introduce ourselves. There's three of us that do the show each week. I am one third of that show. I am David, aka D Brew, voice of the people, Mr. 40%, Glenn Jackson, Nick Nick on the spiritual midget. And I'm joined by this guy I can touch tonight, my brother. It's Lee. What up, everyone? It's Ron Jeremy's bastard child, the one and only Mr. Paulo Santo. And of course, LeBron safety pin. That's right. And then this guy way over to the right, way over to the right. It's the one and only. It's John. I'm John here, the right man. Uh, A.K.A. Tico, A.K.A. the Christmas Junkie, Mr. Groupon, the Madman. They got John Tortorella, a madman. They do have madman. Okay, he's a madman. All right, so that's the three of us, and tonight, this is the first time ever, we have three guests with us, so this is going to be something else. So we have comedians in the house, some of Nashville's best comedians. I'll let you introduce yourself. Mike, number three, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Mm Uh, hey, my name is Laura Peak, aka mediocre comedian, aka very happy to be here, aka thank you very much. <laughs> nice. All right. What about Mike number four? All right, it's me. I'm Micah, a soccer mom in the streets, dance mom in the sheets. Ooh. You know me, M Dog. I don't know. I just threw an extra one in there. It wasn't that good? <laughs> <laughs> Takes time. Takes time. You'll get there. And then we got Mike number five. Oh, right? that's me. Um, it's Mary Jane Berger, um, aka uh, very nervous, aka emotionally unavailable, <laughs> aka um, a burden to love, <laughs> aka very sorry. <laughs> there you go. So yes, that is it. We've got obviously Laura. Micah, Mary J, and they're here to promote their comedy album that they're going to be doing in a couple of weeks. Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. It's going to be fun. And we're going to talk about your, you know, Nashville comedy career and all kinds. And we'll talk about stuff we normally talk about as well. So, so I guess we'll, we always start the show off, us three, as we do this show. We say things that aren't true, things that kind of offend people. So we offer the chance for us to go back and apologize for anything we said on last week's episode. Well, not last week, last time's episode. And uh, we usually start, Lee, is there anything you said on episode 117 you need to apologize for? No, but there is something that you guys said that I'm going to apologize for <laughs> you. Okay, go and ahead. And that is the whole Billy Joel, We Didn't Start the Fire. I'm still not coming off that. You guys claimed it was the greatest song of all time. No, no, no. Yes, you did. No, we did it's not. It's on the table. That I'll go pull the audio. Bullshit. I'll pull the audio. That's not true. Okay, what did top three? It said it's one of the greatest songs ever one written. That's what I said. I didn't say it was the greatest song ever written. Billy okay, Joel. Well, we got, we got some Do guests. You, Maybe we can have them chime in. Who really apologize. wrote the song, though? He did. Billy Joel. Do we all have to apologize for something? <laughs> because I'm not ready. <laughs> You, yes. <laughs> well, you can apologize for not it. being ready. I can't apologize. It's an, it's another one of my AKAs. No apologies. Okay. I like no. it. I'm just saying. Are you discrediting once again the song? The song Billy is Joel. amazing. Are you kidding? It's a great song. Thank it's you. a very good song. Whatever. It's a good song. See, I apologize to our listeners then for your for sorry that. opinion. That's <laughs> also, right. I've heard uh, Lincoln apology. Who? Uh, Abraham Lincoln? Lincoln? Yeah. <laughs> something we got as like vice presidents wrong or something. He had, he had two vice presidents. Oh my God. Uh, we had, he had Boy, two. We had, he had uh, one. Uh, the first one was uh, Hannibal Hamlin. That's the sound of people turning the podcast off right now. <laughs> then, <laughs> For real. Then the one that everybody knows, Andrew Johnson. Also apologize <laughs> to. I'm going to apologize for not knowing either of those uh, vice presidents. I don't know who the president is now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably a good That's though. okay because I don't think the president knows that he's president right now. <laughs> who am I? No, seriously. Who am I? <laughs> okay, I apologize for calling New Jersey the Florida of the North. Oh, no, that's no. Not true. fair. That's, not. that's true. very fair. fair. True. And uh, I'll pass it to John, but the first I want the Imagine Dragons update. Do, 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 All right, so do, do, let me do, do, let, let me break this down for these <laughs> these ladies here. John knows the brother of the lead singer of Imagine Dragons. Like they hang out and stuff. Oh wow! Like yo, can we get him on? Can we get him on the podcast? He's like, well, you know, uh, I'm really just waiting for him to have something big to promote. And I went, he literally just came out with an album last week. And I mean, like, so <laughs> you guys must be very close. Yeah. So John. Are we going to get 
whoever the guy's name is. Are we going to get him on the program? I'm, I'm, uh, it's still in the works. I don't. I'm not sure that I buy that. I don't either. <laughs> you are a smart, smart girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Is there anything you said last episode? Oh um, man, my brain doesn't go that far that back. So. Uh, no. Okay, good. Well, I'm good. It's perfect. So, all right. So, we're going to get started then. So, we got yeah. the comedians on here. So, obviously, you're here, like we say. You got Friday. I'm looking at it. That's why I know. It's not like I, I'm a stalker and I memorized it. But Friday, December 28th, 2018, Third Coast Comedy Club. You're doing a you're recording a comedy album. So, number one, that's amazing. Um, talk about how you three came together to do this, what's involved with it, all that good stuff. Just give some details on it. Did you guys look at me? Oh, and that's so nice. <laughs> you guys did. think that I'm worthy of that. Um, Who are we going to throw under the bus? <laughs> <laughs> it's me. It's me. Um, I mean, it was Micah. Micah came to us and suggested the idea. And Yeah, I think that um, several Nashville comics have recorded albums, and I wasn't necessarily ready to do a full-length comedy album on my own. Like, I don't think I have a 45-minute special or album ready right now but i got into comedy late and we're all gonna die someday so i thought it'd be really fun to partner up with a couple people and each do more like a 15 20 minute set that would be more exciting and um there's a great comedy album called women who kill uh with some famous ladies on it uh amy schumer rachel feinstein and uh thought we'd do something cool like that yeah and i think uh we're doing it at third coast which is the best a fantastic place a really good club yeah. uh and a lot of really cool people at it and i think is i think i really like this idea i like the idea of putting together like your best 15 and and having having something to show for working this hard for so long yeah, yeah. that's still like two and a half years of work for 15 <laughs> minutes you know so yeah. uh yeah so, so is it going to be one album with all three of you on it. That's, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. very cool. So is it getting pressed or is it just going to be available on like digital media? Or well, I was thinking uh, just digital media, but what do you guys think? What I mean, do people think? I mean, having a vinyl would be pretty, be so cool. pretty awesome. I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. I say that, that to everybody that comes on the show, though, to be fair. I you mean, are a vinyl junkie. Yeah, I love vinyl. I'm a, I'm a vinyl junkie too myself. I, um, I'm just thinking about a lot of, Boxes of vinyl <laughs> records in my garage. I'm sorry, yeah. I meant to say in my mom's garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we were in a band and we we had vinyl pressed, and it took us some while to get rid of them, but we finally we did. It took us ten years later, and they're all out there in the world somewhere. So anyway, uh-huh. just just an idea. So really huge coasters. <laughs> Put your drink on this uh, vinyl. I have fifteen of them. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, well, it's a matching a set. Of, I mean, <laughs> a lot of people have CDs, and I kind of thought maybe that's silly to do a bunch of CDs. No, I'd make a CD. I like a CD. I like a CD. Like I listen CD. to other people's CDs that they give me. Sean Parrott. I listen to his CDs. There you go. Brad Edwards. I've listen to Brad his Edwards yeah. CDs. Where do you have a CD player at? Yeah, there? I was just car. wondering that. But it's broken in my now. car. Yeah. Car. I broke yeah. it the other day. Actually, Brad Edwards' CD will be stuck in my CD player oh, uh, nice. until the end of time. That just made it valuable. I know. Congratulations, Brad. <laughs> Not valuable. The more CD valuable. I'm just or the like, CD. <laughs> your car's worth something now, Laura. I think it's Brad's comedy. <laughs> I have the worst rap album of all time stuck in this computer, and I cannot get it out. And it's it's, it's embarrassing. It yeah, I found it. I don't even know. I I can't even eject it. I can't even find it, but I found it on what some... What album is it? It's called Infestor. Oh, no. That got stuck <laughs> yeah, in your... It's infested into your computer. Yeah. I, I mean, if you want. If you the want. The record is I, called Infestor? Who created Infestor? That, that's the dude's name, I guess. And so this, this is He a left it on your car in a Walmart oh, parking lot. I'm sorry. Lot, is right? this a white rapper? It sounds like it's... I don't know. I, I, really, I don't know. Let's see <laughs> if There's I can... a dash between the I in... It's not even playing. That's, that's how this awesome... Is, so the CD doesn't even work. No, I can't get it. Oh, like, I've no. really taken it. I'm just like shook my computer and I'm like, it's terrible. Your you don't even need to hear it. fell in love. Oh, God, I wish you could hear this because it's, it's really That's bad. a horrible I wish. I don't wish you could. Actually. No, it's really bad. But anyways, okay. Well, yeah, CD. Uh, Lee hates CDs. Like when we, we went out and saw a musician, he's like, don't buy the dumb CD. Nobody wants a CD, right? Physical media. I literally bought a, a CD. 
But you hated it. I mean, I, I'm like, that's why I ask, like, what just, CD player do you have? Because it's it's like it's like an eight track at this point. Winter's Nobody has CD it. players. Yeah. Well, okay. So if you guys went to a show and you really liked it, and you're like, oh, I kind of want to listen to this chick's comedy album. Would you want like a download code, or would you just like go listen to it on Spotify? Uh, I would listen to it on. Spotify probably, Spot, but I mean, but I mean, if Spotify. you were there and you were like autographing it, that would be very cool. Oh, like yeah. I, yeah. I, I would think. That I mean, would if, be I like if I'm like CDs. blown away, yeah, I'd want that CD because I'd want to hear it right away again. I'd put it in my car on the way home. Yeah, it's yeah. kind yeah. of like a souvenir of the show too, which yeah. I think is cool. Yeah, and you get to make cool album art. You get to have like a, yeah, yeah. I think we're pretty pro CDs right now. There we go. Okay. So see, okay. there we go. I would buy a CD just to support. The artist, because I feel like you probably get more money off a one-time purchase of a CD than you would streaming of a comedy (laughs) album, especially. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) But okay, well there we go. So that so So that's happening. We just solved a business decision. (laughs) I'm so glad we came here. What else? (laughs) Making dreams come true. That's that's all about blame your brother. That's what we do. (laughs) David runs a side business where he masters and produces CDs. So he'll hit you with a (laughs) red card on the way out. Don't Don't worry. That's what he was hoping. Yeah, it worked. Um, So you've all been doing. How long have each of you been doing? I know Mikey. You said you're relatively new. How long have you two or all three of you? How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, Seven years. Wow. Okay, that's impressive. What about you, Laura? Uh, About two and a half. Two and a half coming up on three, something like that. So I love to ask who who like are some of your favorite comedians of all time. Who are your like top three of all time? Chelsea Peretti is one of mine. Pete Holmes. Um. I'm trying to think of a third. I don't. I like. Oh, Rory Scovel. I love Rory Scovel. I like <gasps> silly like people. You're right. so indie, Mary. <laughs> I like silly people, <laughs> and they're all silly. Yeah. What about you, Micah? Who's who's like in your top? My top three right now are Ali Wong, Hannibal Burris, and John Mulaney. Oh, you had those locked and loaded. I've I've been thinking about it a lot lately. <laughs> I'm a big fan you of John Mulaney. Yeah. Oh uh, uh, yeah. I was gonna say John. Mine would be John Mulaney, Rory Scovel. Well, now it sounds like I'm copying everyone. No, no those are, but that's fine. You are. It's fine. <laughs> I am, I am. You're the <laughs> overlap. Like the, we're a Venn diagram. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, John Mulaney, Rory Scovel, and Michelle Wolf right now. I love. Michelle oh, Wolf. I love. Michelle oh, I like Wolf. her too. She's so underrated. And, you, and, you missed the perfect opportunity to just run down the line, like one, two, three, right there. Just because said yourselves, yeah, yeah, that's true. Because if you're just like, who's your favorite podcaster? I'd be like, me and me and me, and that's it. <laughs> but, uh, favorite comic? No, I. You like John Mulaney? I watched the special, and I just couldn't get into it. I don't <gasps> oh, know. that feels oh, impossible. Hey, I'm just He's keeping so it real. So good. I mean, my Keep favorite bit real. of all time is the Salt and Pepper Diner. Yeah, oh, it's, it's so it's just good. so funny. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he did it's that so bit good. in his last special where he waves like in a, like in an old timey movie. Where he does that like, <laughs> like this wave. It's so good. There we go. He's you, so good. Do, do, so are easy. you guys podcast junkies? Yeah. Okay. Do you ever wa- listen to Good One? There's a good one podcast. Okay. I thought you made you listen to any good ones. I was like, no, no, no. It's, it's, called, one, but... it's called Good One. Okay. But there's one, and it's this guy who's a um, he's a comedy writer for for Vulture, and he interviews like every any famous comedian is on there, and he does one with John Mulaney, and it's the what is it million dollar joke or whatever the pile of money joke. But anyways, if you listen to that. You will like okay. John Mulaney. Okay, I will check it out. I'll, I'll, I like to give people... I mean, I love... My, my favorite comedians right now are like... I love Bill Burr. I think he's love the Bill best. Burr. Yeah, he's so uh, funny. Chappelle, always, constantly, mm-hmm. non- nonstop. And I don't know who the third is. Um, did you watch that Bill Burr cartoon they had on Netflix? Yeah, I did. I liked it. I did, too. Was this recent? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. It's like a couple it. years old, I think. Oh, okay. I think it's like two years old. Yeah. I think season three is coming out soon, Really? Though. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it's really funny. I, I mean, I've seen Bill Burr like a couple times when he comes here. And I mean, I'm just like, I don't know. The guy just speaks like to me, you know, like. Yeah. Stuff, so. Same. That's some of my favorite ones, but he's it, so uh, he's so good at ranting. Yeah, he is. No one's yeah. as good as him at being mad. No, ah, no Lu- <laughs> Lu- Lewis Black is up there too. Uh, yeah, oh, he yeah. He's, he's got a he's got a, a short fuse. <laughs> he was. So then, when you listen to people, like, are you subconsciously, or are you out loud saying, "I, I got to make sure I don't like grab any of these bits these guys have"? Like, do you ever find just, even even with other comedians as you're out on? I mean, it would almost, I know some comedians like I don't really listen to other comedians because I don't want to be like copying their jokes. Ralphie like was that. big on that, not listening to yeah. other comics. Yeah. 
There are so many comics I know who are like won't watch a special, like a, a a special of even a comic they like will come out and they'll be like, I'm not going to watch this. I don't think it's for fear of stealing the material. I think it's like you're just comparing yourself right, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. to them oh in a big God, way. Yeah. I get worried though. Sometimes I'll be like, did I think this? Like I'll have to Google stuff. Oh, yeah. I do that. I every get time really I write paranoid. A new joke, yeah, uh, and you Google it every time. I, if it, I'm if like, it rings did I have a, bell a good at all. idea? Well, because you step on, there are just themes yeah. that people yeah. use in comedy that it's just life. For sure, yeah. About your life. I have. I wrote <laughs> that poop joke that I was really, uh, <laughs> no, no. really proud of, and then <laughs> I was watching an old Ron White special, Mm-mm. and I was like, Did you "Gosh it? darn it! It's not the same joke, but it's the same idea. It's close enough to where." It, yeah, yeah, so I stopped doing that joke. I was like, "Gosh darn it! I <laughs> love Tater Salad so much too. Like I love Ron White so much. I like I him too. Him. Yeah. As a small, like little young girl, I was like, I friggin' love Ron. Yeah, White. yeah." My family and I used to listen to exclusively <laughs> blue collar comedy tour. I on like road trip. I, love, yeah. I loved Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah, yeah I love him yeah. too. What? I do. I do. You guys love Jeff comics. Foxworthy. <laughs> wow. Funny. He's so good. Me I yeah. <laughs> One time when they were all came out on the stools after the show, you know, to rib each other, and then they were making fun of um, what's his name? Is it Bill Engvall? It better be. I hope it's Bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they were they were making fun of the guy Larry who's Cable like, Guy. Yeah, Larry the Cable Guy. Mm. What was his like catchphrase? Get her done. Get, Get her, her done. done. They all go. That that's just insert punchline here, and I was like, oh. Man. Is that not all? All of them, though? All of them, I mean, yeah. it's all of them. It's stupid. Well, I mean, Ron, Ron White, he doesn't really have a no, catchphrase. No, he doesn't. The other two do. I mean, yeah. you got you might be a redneck if, and yeah. then Bill Ingvalls is, here's your sign. Yeah. 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 I just, wow. If I went back and listened to that Jeff Fox for the album, I'd probably throw up now. But I remember, <laughs> I remember as a kid being like, this is... Go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I am. When I was in high school, I listened it. to Jeff Fox. Where they all of course, of course yeah. you did. Of course you did, Jack. He was everywhere. So yeah. uh, for the show, we have to ask you opinion because we have a huge fan here of Jeff Dunham. <laughs> oh no! What do y'all think of Jeff Dunham? Oh no! Oh, oh no! Wait, the guy is, with the puppet. That's the puppet. Yeah, the puppet, the puppet guy. guy. Yeah. Is he a comedian? Right. He's a comedian. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. calls himself a comedian. I think he is. Yeah, he's a comedian. I mean. <laughs> He he can, is, yeah. He's, he's a comedian. comedian. Yeah. I think that kind of said it all right there. The puppet guy. Uh, I'm sure he's really good. I get scared when I, I get nervous when I see the puppet, and I've never watched his special, even though he's a new one on Netflix. And I was like, yeah. I should. And then I'm like, No, I can't. Wait, you get just used her, her puppet phobia as a cop out for her. <laughs> I want to hear more about this puppet phobia. You get scared when you see the puppet. Really? I okay. I had a. Do you? you I think it's you a, have dummy. a daughter, don't you? Okay. I don't think yeah. it's a puppet. It's true. Okay. okay. Good sorry. Point. Good do you guys point. remember sorry. American Girl dolls? Yes. Yes, yeah. I love them. I did too, but I had Molly and you did. I. Did. <laughs> I had Molly to me. Did you Molly. keep her braids in? I took no, mine out. I, I brushed them. Oh my god! You brushed it. it. You rebel. <laughs> <laughs> She had a is creepy, a rebel. She had a creepy look in her eye when you took her glasses off, and so I used to always play with her the exact same amount as my other dolls because I thought she might kill me in my sleep. Oh wow! Okay. She only yeah, you could throw her away, but she would just get angrier. <laughs> yeah. To to be fair, to be fair, <laughs> puppets are creepy. Um, we used to we'd, we'd go over to our grandmother's. She would watch us, and they had one of those like old school marionettes. Yeah, oh, I mean like yeah. the real authentic one, and he would sit there. Right there, as we slept, right next to the bed, and it was always kind of creepy. Those things, those things, the, the way they paint the eyes on, they then, do look like they follow you. But then we worked at Cracker Barrel, and they have all those like glass eye dolls, yeah. and that they are the scariest thing. Like when those you're closing at night, and you're just looking at all those dolls, I'm, I'm out of here, dude. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, nope. Like some guys like coming in to rob. I'm like, yeah, you can have it. I'm out. I'm going. I feel like dolls. I'm gonna be like that old lady with baby dolls in her lap. Oh, no. <laughs> like oh, I like babies. <laughs> I don't know. I like dolls. One of my I work at a school. One of my students always plays with dolls, and I'm always down to do it too. I'm like, let's play with the dolls together. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> my turn. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's my turn. Get out of here. So <laughs> Now, who is the comedian that had... Oh God, I can't remember. It's not Chelsea Peretti. It's another one. Uh, she's got black hair. She Sarah had a, Silverman? No, not Sarah Silverman. Whitney Sil- Cummings. Whitney, Whitney Cummings. Yeah. Oh. So she had a TV show. Did any of you watch it? Um, you know, I watched I like one episode it. and I, was, I dropped out. So, the fear, so the, here's the question, because John loves Big Bang Theory as well. We're just going to run down John for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> but um, 
That's Maybe. not different from any other episode. <laughs> John, I like that you don't shy away from your unpopular yeah. opinion. Well, he also likes... <laughs> what kind of font do you love, John? I like Comic Sans. I knew it. I'm a I'm a papyrus person. Papyrus like is better. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my god. I like fonts. I don't care. I like a Lucinda. Oh, nice. Lucinda, Lucinda handwritten script. Gotham. A Gotham narrow. Oh. Those are my time. Gotham is nice actually. I like yeah. a I copper Gotham. black, but I'm a bit of a hipster, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, <laughs> speaking of Big Bang Theory, what so if you woke up, if like in oh did I hit your mic? Yeah, wow, that was weird. Uh, if in five years if you woke up and you were on like Big Bang Theory, do you think you would have like a sense of contempt for your life or would you just be like, hey, I'm good? Like I've always thought that like if you thought you were making this cool, edgy comedy, because I think Whitney Cummings thought that was like a cool edgy comedy and I watched it and it was it was just terrible. It was like a typical sitcom. I mean, do you think you'd hate your life after about three years of being on a crap show? Like maybe like Friends or something, which is a crap show, which I wow. and I stand by this theory because I'll tell you why I'll let you answer a question. But I watched late at night. I've got my daughter I've been staying home with. And so I'm watching like at two AM in the morning Seinfeld. I'm like, yeah man, I love Seinfeld. Seinfeld, Seinfeld. Then it's followed up by Friends. That's one of the worst drop-offs ever of any show. Friends is garbage, and it's wow. the Big Bang Theory of its time, and no one wants to admit Ouch. it. Well, actually, Big Bang Theory actually has people of uh, non non white people on it, so that would be unfair. <laughs> oh, but anyway, that is, but it was a different time. Yeah, it was a different, a different time. time. It was it was fifteen years ago. So, <laughs> okay. So, would what do you think about that situation? If the if it happened, do you think you would just keep? Going along, or would you be like those rebels? I think that there's quit? a reason that a lot of people produce their own shows. Like, if you think of like Louis when he was producing Louis, like mm-hmm. how much he was doing himself. Like, I think that people who are really into controlling the quality of their product do move towards having more of a say in what they're doing. Probably when you first start out, you just are happy to get a part. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what I was gonna say. I'd it's like, fun, am I yeah. getting am I getting this opportunity like three years from now? Sure. Because if so, I would take. <laughs> yeah. You'd be Phoebe all, all day? Yeah. Oh, I would be great Phoebe. Oh, I would take friends money Phoebe. any day. Yeah. It's all yeah. about the money, man. That check. I don't, some yeah. of those guys quit, though. They're like, I'm yeah. out of here. I don't want to be on the show anymore. After well, three but, years, you probably could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess you could. So. You could buy like... a bobcat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. If you just made a lot of money, you could buy a bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Mary which, is being which, very on brand, and the see, guys are confused. I, I was sure she was going to go jet ski, but I thought she was talking about Bobcat the comedian. Oh, actually, I'm I was sorry. like, okay, okay. okay, you could buy him. I was yeah. like, which person on Friends owns a Bobcat? I thought it was a fact. You you probably he could. Said I would. I should have explained. He said I would take Friends money, and then I said you could buy a Bobcat. I yeah. should have. I shouldn't have said it. That's the truth. <laughs> you said it. It's uh, out there. Mary it's gone. Mary is very gone. into exotic animals. I thought you pet. just all said animals. you don't apologize for anything. I apologize all the time. <laughs> it's a very and I'm a liar. Okay, oh, I, I only apologize. I I'm only apologize and I lie a lot. Okay, right. so so you love wait, Friends? Wait. I want to. Did you love Friends? All three of you? Loved I it. did, but I also like grew up watching it, and I think that Me that's too. part of it. Because I did go back and rewatch it, and there was a lot of things that I was like, Ugh, okay. okay. Like, I didn't like that Rachel, like, now at 30, I did not like that Rachel came back from Paris. That made me so mad. I was like, dude, ditch Ross. He's the worst for you. He's a freaking Just the worst. He's the worst person. So annoying. I hate Ross Geller. Let it be known. There, I, he's not, he is terrible. He is a terrible he's a person. He's a terrible person. Oh, oh. He talks down to her. All three of them are terrible people. Like all three guys are the worst. Well, all everybody on this show is terrible. I, I like Chandler. Oh, I, like, I like a Bing. Yeah. I like Chandler Bing. I didn't watch. Yeah. I didn't watch it a ton. But like if it Joey. comes on now, I'll be like, I'll, I'll, I'm not a, uh, I'm not laughing at it. Yeah, you know? I'm not cracking up. I'm not above it though. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's know. an episode where is it, is it purely out of laziness to push it the is. remote? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> My batteries have been dying for two years. <laughs> I gotta save that juice. <laughs> I, I'm sure someone at this table owns a box set of Friends. Who is it though? I, I do not. I know I, what you're insinuating, lady. Like, I do <laughs> well, not yeah, own a box set. It was my would have been my vote for sure. I own no? one of the hills. Ooh, <laughs> not at all controversial. Great show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you all know what that... The Hills? It's yeah, a reality so we, show on MTV. So, yeah. to tell you, well, while we know who the Hills are, my aunt called us like three weeks ago, and apparently she heard she has a daughter, and her daughter's good friends with the daughter of Lauren Conrad and, and Cutler. Oh. 
Wow. So she's like hanging out at their house all the time. So yeah, we, I know what the hill is. Elsie, she wow. makes great flats. Elsie. Yeah. So I was, I, I got into a deep dive of the Cutler. Well, I don't even know what it's called. Their new reality show. Oh, Chris and Cavallari. Yeah. Yeah. Very Cavallari or whatever it's called. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Better than Friends. Yeah. So, not a fan. It's better than Friends. Not a what fan. It is a good show. We what should do you just have? Oh, I, I like it. it. What do you have a box set of? Like, mm. I have Arrested Development. Good show. Chappelle show. Good show. Uh, you just have your answers ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of the one. She's like, hey, Google, what's the coolest shows I can tell my friends no. I watch? No. <laughs> there we go. Remember that so H- I'm in a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a podcast. Um, what's that show that was on HBO where they're all in the Wild West? Oh, Deadwood. I have Deadwood. <laughs> well, that is such a hipster answer. I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Yeah. I never watched Deadwood. What's that show that Google I watch all the time? Like. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that Laura. was out like 10 yeah. years ago. Yeah, Laura, what do you own? Do you I've any- got... I also have Chappelle show. I have 30 Rock. And I have a couple seasons of Parks and Rec, maybe. But Ooh. I think that's it. I have a lot of The Office. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got a couple of those. Yeah. I love The Office. Oh, and Seinfeld. I have a lot of Seinfeld, too. But I have, I've not even seen all of Seinfeld. They were like hand-me-downs for my family. I need to rewatch that. It's hilarious. I like how in the 90s, like, Frasier and Seinfeld, like, everybody had a new person they were banging. <laughs> like what happened since the '90s? Like I think people are like, <laughs> are, they, are we less promiscuous now? That's why we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be one of the having less sex than any other yeah. generation. There Just putting go. it out there. Great, the great. We, we need to go back to Frasier time. <laughs> like why? How was that guy getting like, like the most pretentious, <laughs> awful looking dude? <laughs> so he's not good looking. He's oh, like God. a troll. No, oh, he's, he's, he's gross. I love I've, Kelsey Grammer. He's fantastic. I've heard people say he's good looking. And I don't. I, well, I never understood. We, we've also heard Maybe people they, say that Elon Musk was good looking. Though, oh, so yuck! He looks like a Clorox wipe. Like <laughs> 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 Not a lie. <laughs> All right, Dave. What do you have on box set? Oh, I've got Chappelle Show, Mr. Show, Mr. Show, oh, awesome. Mr. Show? I've got awesome. Sopranos. Oh, I mean, I can Sopranos. get deep. Deeper hipster than she. If we, if we <laughs> want to do that's what we're, no, I already do on this. I, I, those are the last one I think of all was probably Chappelle show, and like I referenced that, you know, yeah, con, nonstop. Like I was actually my kids act. He's like a hater now, so it was me and my wife were laughing about the hater skit, the player hater <laughs> skit, and I just love that skit. It makes me crack up. But anyway, yeah, Lee, what about you? you uh, I don't know. I, the only thing that I can even remember owning a box set was Indiana Jones, and it didn't have the last one. <laughs> The crystal skull or whatever. Oh, well, that's good. No, that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's, you dodged a bullet there, my friend. <laughs> I never saw it. Was it bad? It's really bad. It's something about aliens. I'm not sure. So one Is of my, it yeah. bad if you like don't particularly appreciate the movies? You just think they're cool? Oh, I think that's most people. Uh, Indiana Jones, I actually sat down with my kids last week and we w- started to watch Indiana Jones, the first one, and they watched like the first five minutes, which is awesome, you know, and then they were like, I'm done. Like the story started and they're like, we're out, dad, we're not going to leave. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> which is weird because the first five minutes is when he's still in the classroom, right? No, it's when he, no, it's when they go get Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When, yeah, when he's going to get those small statues. But I think a lot of people this generation were in, I, I mean, I work with a lot of people never seen Pulp Fiction, which blows my mind. Like, I've never I'm, seen it. Well, there we go. It blows my mind right there. So, I but it was yeah, like required. My problem was I was a pirate. I was a pirate. So the Indiana Jones was a gift. I'm like, what is this? They're like, oh, it's a box set. I'm like, oh. Oh, because you were just stealing all yeah, the movies. Oh, I thought you said oh. I was a pirate. He yeah. did say that. Oh, oh, he did say that. that I also said. took that very literally. <laughs> well, I mean, that's <laughs> the way. He's a young man I mean, with an eye patch on he's, being like, he's got a peg leg thing. in his garage. Yeah. And that's why I don't like DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, our water damage. The sea it is a hard mistress. Arr. <laughs> I don't know. So next week is your intro going to be like Lee the Pirate. <laughs> Lee the Pirate. I, I, I remember our dad pirate. brought home like a laser disc when they first came out. Do you remember this? Yeah. He was like, I think I can guess what movie you're talking about. What's the movie? The Last of the Mohicans. Last of the Mohicans, which I've seen like 150 times because no, he thought that was it. the greatest movie it's ever. Good. You had to watch the movie. You get halfway through it, you'd take it out, flip it over, and the disc was as big as a record. Yeah. And there was like four of them. So it would take you like three hours to watch a movie. You're just like, what is going on here? It's like an intermission, you know? Yeah. Go get some popcorn. Did you have like a nice theater? 
Because the only time no, I've no, ever seen no, a laser disc, <laughs> it was in like a nice theater. We did, we did not. No. Oh, okay. Our TV was probably this size right here, probably about 13 inch TV at the house. Let's be honest, so. he probably stole the laser disc player. <laughs> <laughs> probably did, yeah. Yeah. Got a TV sitting on top of the other TV. <laughs> All right, so Lee, do we have any stories we could we talk about here? Well, I did. I had oh, a, I had a scam that I wanted to talk about. Oh. A scam? Yeah, I'm always scheming, and I've come up with the perfect scam, and I wanted to run by everyone to make sure okay. if you think this would work. So, uh, you know, like typically most people are Christians, and they get Thanksgiving and Christmas off, and I'm like, oh, this is so nice to have like Thursday, Friday off. Then I was thinking like if I was Jewish, Christian, and Muslim, I could take <laughs> all of the holidays off. Which means I pretty much wouldn't have to work December at all. Do you think that would work? I just go to my well, boss and I'm like, religious holiday again. So I think <laughs> scam is being three different religions. That sounds like a hassle. It That's does. a lot of work. <laughs> can I? But can I be that? Can I be each of the three? I mean, you or do realize. they have like rules against? I it? think you can. You can. You can. You can cover your 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 Jewish and your Christian. But uh, I think the Muslim part will kind of throw you off. No, I would. And I would argue. I think you probably could be Muslim and Jewish. But they neither of them believe in Jesus, so that would kind of cut undercut that. You can't be Jewish and say you believe in Jesus, dude. Yeah, you can. You can't. Well, you couldn't be Muslim and say you couldn't be Christian. And There's also messianic Muslim. Jews. That's because they're that's actually a, a thing. You could but be it's like one, one of the commandments: the... you shall have no other gods. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, I think I mean, Christianity oh, yeah, cuts it out. Things. Now, what is ever? What does being a Christian have anything to do with following commandments? I'm just <laughs> I'm just here for the benefits, y'all. I'm not trying to go to church I just or like nothing. A holiday. Yeah, <laughs> you guys gonna say I'm, I'm a white guy? Give me, give me all the, uh, you give me Christmas. You could be like a, one of those Jewish people who believes in Jesus, that Jesus is the Messiah. That's so a, that's a messianic do, Jew. Yeah, a messianic, messianic Jew, and then you could be like, yeah. I gotta have Passover and Easter there off, dudes. That's right. true. That's probably a better yeah. scheme. Yeah. yeah, that's. I'm, I'm gonna glad try. You, brought you this got up too with greedy. Us. Yeah, you got way too greedy. <laughs> yeah. and honestly, like then I can like pick too, because like. Do I like Christmas trees or do I like menorahs? I think I'm. I think I like menorahs better, honestly. That's better could, than a Christmas tree. Yeah, Ooh. I think you could do the Christmas tree in the window and then uh, put the menorah on the. Menorah. A lot of people have both. Yeah, a lot of people do it. There's we a have. Lot of oh, there's already families. people doing this. We have both in our house. Okay. My wife's got a menorah. Okay. I don't know why we're not Jewish at all, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> maybe she's angling for that <laughs> maybe free <so>. holiday. <laughs> it's that that Adam Sandler song is really catchy. She's just like, I yeah. like that. So good. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'll let Next you know. week, Dave will be wearing a yarmulke. <laughs> I might. You know? um, yeah, Adam Sandler's got a new stand-up bit up, and I've not watched it, and I'm not going to. <gasps> I'm going to watch it. The new it. Adam Somebody Sandler? Told me I it watched good. it. Is it good? No, it's terrible. Come on. I have, I have complicated feelings about it. That pause okay. kind of I, I want to hear this. Volumes. Yeah, what's, why, why do you have complicated feelings? Okay, Adam Sandler... Super talented, obviously. His jokes are funny. But? They, the way that they did the special is, I guess I'm kind of like a traditional comedy club comedy girl. Right. I like jokes. I like, you know, that sort of thing. And it's like they filmed all of his sets for a whole tour, and then they just slice yeah. one oh. song, another song, another joke, another song from totally different places. So it's not like... See, one it of doesn't most, have that flow. Yeah, and yeah I, I, I agree with you. I don't like that. And I think the whole skill of being like a headliner or like a big time comedian is that you can stand on a stage for 45 minutes and keep people entertained the whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's all good. And then you videotape it once and it's like, whoa, you did such a good job. Like... And that it took that out of it. I, I think, didn't know. I think I the hardest part, not, well, it's not the hardest part. I think one hard part about it being a comedian is is the segue between. Here we go. There we go. And if you can't if you can't manage that segue, I mean, then then it makes. Let's let's talk about this one. Let's, yeah, let's let John <laughs> explains comedy to comedians. <laughs> Oh, episode one eighteen. Is this a misogyny alert? <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> that was the greatest thing you probably ever done on the show. You know what I think? That, let me let me tell you the hard part about being comedians, ladies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that sounded like an opinion to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like That's opinion. solely what it was. Yeah. Just an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know that it was segmented like that. I didn't know that they like split or you know put a lot of things together right that way. Yeah. That is kind of, that kind of takes me out of it too. I would expect you no less from Adam Sandler, honestly. <laughs> what do you, I think 
think he's fantastic. Um, you think he's fantastic? Yeah, I love no, him. that's I like a lie. Him. That's <laughs> you got to get out of here. You got to. That is not what you think. If if you guys put the Hanukkah song on right now, you guys would be no. I, I get, love we him. get kicked off of yet another promotion. John, do I? I do not like music and comedy. I, I, I'm not I a big fan can't of music stand and it. I think I, I never laugh at any of it. What? Like that that one guy that does music with all like the lights and all that. Who is that guy? He just made that movie Bo, Eighth Grade. Bo Burnham. Burnham. Dom, oh, get oh, out of here. I want just joke. So just funny. give me a joke, dude. I don't need. Don't pick up a guitar. I don't think. I think Adam Sandler last time he was funny was Saturday Night Live. No, no, no. no. Happy Gilmore. Thank you. That's it. And since then, I'm a big wedding singer fan. Oh, me wedding too. singer. Okay, that's oh, decent. That's I'll give you. But that's not. That's not funny so much. That's, it is funny. It's, I think it's, it's hilarious. hilarious. Okay, it's comedy. Comedy. But it's not really billed as a comedy. It's yeah. more like a rom com. I mean, let's talk about grown ups. Grown ups too. Let's That's not talk about grown John. John, do you know what rom com stands for? I know romantic comedy, oh, no. but I mean, just curious. It's just the the comedy aspect of that movie. Let's is talk not about Jack. And, let's talk about Jack and Jill. Let's talk about. Oh. We, I mean, we do want to keep going. This guy hasn't been I funny mean, just because he didn't have years. a good movie doesn't mean that he's not funny. Uh, is he funny? I he's mean, got yeah. this, the thing is, he's built this this fan base that it, that it's kind of like shut up and take my money. From a lot of people, so he could go up there and do anything, yeah, that's true. and people are going to go see those movies. Yeah, but yeah. is he I mean, more of mo- a comedian or is he more of an actor comedian? I don't know. I'd say now he's more, much more of an actor. Yeah, he's an yeah. actor, and, and, and not a great one. Like those movies aren't good, They're but terrible. I'm always going to love Adam Sandler because yeah. of the you know like six h- hilarious comedies okay. that I watched over yeah. and over again. Yeah, Billy Madison. Yeah, they were, they were, fun, they were yes. unbelievable. Right. Okay. So if you like a band and they come out with three good albums, let's just say Weezer, who I love. I like I, Weezer's one of my favorite bands ever. Because of three great albums they made, and then they put out like sharp eight other. Yeah, it's sharp decline. But I'm still like I'm a Weezer fan. But am I really a Weezer fan? Or I'm really, I was a Weezer fan. You're, I think you were uh, still a fan. It's hard, man, it's hard yeah. to say you're not a fan of anything anymore because you don't want to like say because you listen to it at a certain point in your life you don't want to be like yeah these guys are terrible now. But come on, are you, shutting, Adam Sandler. are you shutting the door on Weezer? Yeah, I don't buy any of their new stuff. Oh, okay. But you listen to the new stuff. Dave's one of those out. people who's like, I like the old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But come on, listen. Hey, like... Weezer's going to become the new the new dad rock. Okay? No, <laughs> it, it is. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I just don't like you're not the best anymore, so I hate you. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. no. I mean, that's going to suck for everybody no. that's ever been famous. But here's they're going to go downhill. No, Every, Adam, if they live long enough, they go downhill. Adam Sandler sucks now. It's not like you're not good anymore. No, you suck, dude. Like Jack and Jill <laughs> oh my, is so terrible. That was a bad movie. It is I one mean, of, of course. It's Terrible it's movie. no, it, he made it though. He wrote it, he that thought one. that was funny. Like, he wrote down, went, Man, guys, funny concept. Here you go. Me, my sister, we look the same. It's that gets it. <laughs> Write the jokes. You guys ever seen Nutty Professor? <laughs> go with me. Yeah, like, oh. <laughs> I so, love Nutty Professor. It's so good. So I like you, the clumps too, honestly. Oh my god! <laughs> so you and John are sitting beside each other. It makes perfect sense now. <laughs> the coolness goes downhill, obviously. My favorite Taylor's movie is Mrs. And the Doubtfire. Oh, Mrs. Doubtfire. That's a good. That's a good movie. That's a fantastic. Okay, Robin Williams kept making good movies. It's not like he had a sharp decline at the end. I mean, except for like... He had a sharp decline. He had a very sharp decline. Oh, my God. Why did he say... He said sharp Write that down. That's an apology. Oh, God. (laughs) Okay. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's what I mean. His life turned out fine. People people burn out. Yeah, David Brewington, yes. So welcome to hell. (laughs) I didn't even make a joke. We've got you on the front (laughs) seat. Okay, hey, talking about burnout, pull up that News Channel 4 story, because I, I, I'm very interested in this. If you if you live in Nashville, news, uh, Channel 4 is one of the local news stations, and uh, Demetria oh, Cal- yes. Calademus, oh, she was on there for years, and she got let go, and now she's suing Channel 4 for an age discrimination, a gender bias lawsuit, and this is like, this is making big waves and everything, and I guess... I'm reading everybody, and everybody's obviously like pro Demetria Caladimus. So obviously, you know, I jumped on the other side. Cause that's what I do. But I just think if you're in the news, okay, isn't there a sense of appearance with the? Isn't the news like? Uh, I mean, it is. Yeah, it, it's crazy. They made like Tom Brokaw right quit in 1987 because he turned 40. It was like so wild how they did that. For it's so ladies. crazy. Like, like it's so crazy. Like Rush Limbaugh, they like kicked him off the air 20 years ago because he looks like a sack well. of flour with zits somehow. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I mean, you know, Tracy Ullman still got her show, right? She's not. 
Well, who's your boy with a mustache? Bob Mueller. Yeah. But he looks cool. Go. Like See. if one of the oh, hey, I'm just saying, if she's saying age discrimination, who who else is old besides okay, Bob Mueller's one guy. Can you name a, a bunch just, of other oldies? On, there's I, only like four of them. <laughs> I've been on your Twitter timeline. You're like shouting out to the newscasters. I, think, I love you're local like, news. Uh, I think it's amazing. But <laughs> if you're gonna act like that that's an entertainment field that's not based on looks, I think that's kind of dumb and it's not approaching the reality of it. If you watch any news, there's no ugly like news anchors sitting there delivering the news. It's just a fact. All okay. the dudes are gross. Like the vast majority yeah. of the dudes yeah. are gross. Like uh, almost all of them. On Good Morning Fox America? For one second. Uh-huh. Every woman is like yeah. gorgeous. Well, I mean, and that's a little bit. all the guys yeah. are nasty looking. I you mean, have to think of your demographic. Who watches local news? Who does I, that? Well, I mean, I, a ton of people do. You want to take a quick survey of the table? Okay, I'll no. watch it. Yeah, you it's... watch it? Not anymore, no. 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 Okay, well. No, not really. Then why is everybody up in arms then if they're not even watching the <laughs> stupid thing anyway? That's a big Because point. it's, it's it misogynistic. So it is, but that is a, that's, it's big old misogyny alert. Here, yeah. Here's my thing. <laughs> when someone tells me someone's a, a jerk or an asshole, I am, I wrote, I write them off immediately. And I, I know my dad met her one time and he said she was the worst person ever. And so I'm just like, I'm done with it. My, my yeah. sister met her too. So she should. Uh, my sister was she was ringing the bell for the Salvation Army, and she was working at at the Kroger in Bel Mead. Oh, she, it was like Demetria Caldema. She, well. oh, she like met so her, nice. and like she said, she was not a very nice person. She's good at her job though, and she's, she's been good at her yeah, job this whole time. She's yeah. Emmy Award winning news anchor. She, also, you're more likely to think she's not nice because she's an older woman. Yeah, too. You're also more likely she's to like interpret guarded. her behavior. Well, this was uh, this, uh, this, this was, was like, like twenty this was years twenty ago. years ago. To be fair, yeah, yeah. So I think she you, was like, 50. but also women, yeah. are, women are held to different uh, standards for behavior, also. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and looks big time. Yeah. I think if oh, you are yeah. in the public eye, you 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 have to have a certain public. Persona. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just true. saying. Yeah. I, mean, I, I won't saying. say that if somebody's acting like an ass. I'm not. You know, I don't know yeah. how she behaved to those people. I don't know her personally, know but. I think it is very valid for her to be like, I've done my job very well for a very long time. I know why this is happening and it's unfair because the people that we see, like the women that we tend to see on the news, young, good looking men, f- either fine or old and gross. Yeah. yeah. Like it, 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 <laughs> there's a big That's old true. pattern there. That's true. I don't, I mean, how, <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I can't think of, I mean, I, I'm mean I haven't heard any girls say that there is a certain newscaster that was a local newscaster that is dreamy. So. Oh, there's a couple, uh, there's, there's a couple good looking dudes. There's a man, couple good sure. looking dudes. Well, you know who, oh, uh, go ahead. Uh, Anderson oh. Cooper. Anderson Cooper, babe, babe and a half. Yeah. yeah. All this. And they're not going to fire him once he, like 20 years from now just because. But he's aged better. He used to look, honestly. This he is, looks like this him. This is true fact. No, he used to look like me, and then he got better looking as he <laughs> aged out. So it kind of worked out for him. He, he was the ugly duckling, and now he's good looking. So I think with guys, oh, they kind of uh, get uh, better no. looking. No, they do. A lot of them do. You think George, Clo- do. George Clooney, ER. You tell me he looks he looks better now than he did in ER. He's 100%. like hundred percent. You can't compare he it looks... to like the, the hottest guy yeah, in the world. Okay. Like we're talking about normal. Well, okay. I mean, you got you can kick it back even further because Anderson Clooney. Cooper. We just named Anderson Cooper. Yeah. Some dudes do start like kind of for some reason like peak. If think like, about I guys you met at twenty. Think about like John Stewart. John Stewart got oh see boom oh see now I see you think a twenty year old dude you met come on. They were they were but the I, worst. Okay. You get to 40, 50, they're pretty good now. They they do. I'm just telling you. I don't know why that is. It's very I just I think on the on the very like just baseline, uh demanding that people be like attractive because we're watching yeah. them on TV is just weird in the first place. It's like <laughs> yeah. why why should that ever be the case? If yeah. she's good or it really should not matter at all. It, I'm not even taking into account the right. standards for men and women. That shouldn't uh it shouldn't matter to anybody. But I think the average person, if we take us out of here, they want to look at good-looking people on the news, movies, TV shows. It's fact. Oh, good friends. Oh, they were all terribly ugly. Well, see, like, no, no. I think I think most people that are smart want to hear, like, good, like, they would watch the news because they want to see good news. Okay. You, however, would be like, honey, I don't care what the weather is tomorrow. Just wear that dress. <laughs> I think that's the difference. Uh, that's true. Have I told uh, you how I don't want to bang Demetri Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's be clear. <laughs> I guess I mostly listen to NPR. Bangable newscasters. People look like. Brought by David. <laughs> hey, the, the the news lady on too, uh, the weather lady. She had a she had a long run. Uh, I forget her name now. I don't know. You forgot her name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so she got long machine? in the tooth. <laughs> Unrememberable. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, like I say, I, it's, I, it's going to be, I, obviously, she's probably going to win. I mean, I, you know, that's what everyone says. I don't I know much about it. But, but is it, it, it going to change the culture? Look, I mean, it I don't know. It changes that one Why? thing. If that woman gets a t-shirt, that's a small victory, but it's a good one, I think. Yeah. But, but I will say this also. I, honestly, she is actually kind of part of the problem because I know for a fact she had like a clothing line that she created based off the clothes that she wore on the news. From the French shop. When she was younger. So, like, you know, she when she was younger, she was probably kind of promoting that kind of same image. Mm. And then she got a little bit older, and she's like, whoa, I got to... So she's causing the problem by being an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's by not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> when she was younger, she was, like, all about, you know, the style, the fashion, looking good to some degree. And now, like, she's like, well... That's not. I don't, here's that's what not I cool know. that the industry is like that. No, oh. but I mean, there's a difference between se- was she like selling Botox? She was just like, like this is what I wear on the news. You, yeah, you, you, you really do get dressed like me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she wins. I like the Midget <laughs> Carlos Davis <laughs> Botox special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't even know what I, you threw me off with that <laughs> joke. I'm if if you had said she used to sell like tanning spray for babies, I would have been like, "You're right." Okay, yeah, really, re- really good point. <laughs> I literally had a point. You literally just uh, I, I don't even know. Okay, what it so is. we we got to get to one more news story. Okay. It's the okay. it's a national scoop news story of the week. Uh oh. This man, uh, he mailed his girlfriend nude photo photos to her mother oh. after she broke up with him. Wow. So it comes in. Christopher Tyler, 25, Trash. was arrested on Wednesday after he allegedly mailed nude photos of his ex-girlfriend to her mother after she broke up with him, and he offered cash and blank checks to take him back. <laughs> Good God. Yikes. Wow. This guy's a winner. See? She should staple all his very sad little dick pics to all the, like, <laughs> just staple them to everywhere in town. Also, that's so, funny. Like, Do you see how much the checks are for, right. though? So yeah. he, he left her an envelope containing an apology letter, $200 in cash, and unsigned checks made out in the amount of 800000 no, 80000 80, $20,000, and $1,000. Kind of went down after that last Yeah. <laughs> Whose mom hasn't seen them naked, though? That's true. So it's kind of like, if my mom got nude photos of me, she'd be like, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just Mary J, That's being true. Mary J. Yeah, my, mom, my mom would have been, like, really pissed at that guy, not me. So, <laughs> yeah, I so the question, have you ever dated anyone, not obviously this crazy, but have you dated someone that, that wrote you that a $80,000 blank check? Obviously. <laughs> Nobody, people pay me money to go away. <laughs> I'm not to send me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One time a guy tried to get me to get back together with him and he brought me ice cream and offered to let me drive his Mustang. <laughs> and just not even have it. And his So how was how was the handling? <laughs> it didn't it didn't work. <laughs> Was the wrong flavor of ice cream? Uh, yeah, I would have wanted to know what <laughs> no, kind I of ice cream. ice cream. Rocky Road for sure. <laughs> what kind of ice cream was it? I must know. I think it was like turtle. Oh, he went all out. Okay. <laughs> you shouldn't have taken him back. Fancy pants. Well, we just said because Scoop Nashville is the sponsor of the show. Ooh. So if you go to scoopnashville.com, you can check out all these crazy. He's got crazy stories. He's uh, It's Jason Steen. He breaks like a lot of news stories. And so he, it's fun. If you want to go in there, there's always like silly stories like this on there. And you can get a, a chuckle, you know, since the news sometimes can be a little bit <laughs> crazy and yeah. serious. Check to and, see what guys you should not date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. I mean, he's for not to say poor guy, but when he goes to jail, he's going to be a poor guy because when they find out what he's in there for, it's it's not going to be a good time. Like what what is the charge? What is the I charge? Getting extortion. His widow, getting his widow heart Does it? Is it a, <laughs> no, it says it. Oh, un, un, unlawful exposure and harassment. Okay. Also, why does he two thousand like dollar bond? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Pretty low. That is. I know. Crazy. That's what I was thinking. I mean, if he's writing a check for eighty thousand, that's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> it's like three thousand for a DUI. <laughs> And how do we know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I guess, uh, so, all right. So, what we do on the show, since uh, first time here for most of you, is that uh, people write in. And this is a whopper, and these are actual people writing in. And John tries to give them advice. We call it. It's it's called the Dear John segment, and Ooh. you ladies are gonna get to help this week. And okay. it, it is one for the ages. So we're gonna play the sounder, and then Leah read it. John will give the advice. Here we go. All right, Lee, go ahead. This one comes in, dear John. No. God, how oh, okay. Go God, how I love you. 
<laughs> Your humor generally keeps me buoyant throughout the week, and the anticipation Aww. of the next episode of Tom Fullery and insight carries me when I start to flag. That's for all of us, not just John, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so this is the actual advice. Dear John, I have really big boobs. Now, I am not ashamed of them. I paid good money for them. They are really pretty. However, I work around mainly women. Of course, this means I usually have the biggest boobs in the room, sometimes in the building. It is my responsibility to edit my appearance so as not to offend other women. Should I wear baggy clothes so they don't get uncomfortable? I never show cleavage, and my clothes are no tighter than anyone else's. But when your breasts are a triple D, they are hard to miss. I get ugly looks in the elevator on occasion, and sometimes women tell me I should get a reduction. Thanks in advance. Shady. Shady. Ooh. Shady. John, I Unless can't. you're having black back problems, do not get a reduction. In fact, if you want to be on the show next week, leave us a voicemail. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you wear what you want to wear. Oh if it's comfortable, God. don't don't bend to these people. They're haters. <laughs> They're jealous. Start introducing more cleavage, maybe, right? If it's comfortable to you, yeah, do it. Especially if you come on the show. Anyway. <laughs> what do you really think, John? I mean, honestly, don't think about these she's ladies not, here. Think not, about it's just us what's three. What thinking about? I think uh, <laughs> I, 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 I hate to hear if you're not that. thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was me sugarcoating it. Like, go naked. <laughs> what, John, do you think this woman has a responsibility to dress conservatively at an office at an office setting? Now, I'm not saying she's working at Hooters. I'm saying she works at like a basic. Based on what she said, she's not wearing anything more revealing than the next girl. So, I mean, but she's saying should she, she continue to dress like that? I think she should be if she's comfortable. And she's not, her bosses aren't coming to her, then let it, hey, let it fly. Let it fly. Let right. it fly. Uh, ladies, I hear what Laura well, thinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she wants to know, basically, is it my responsibility to edit my appearance so as not to offend other women? I, I wonder where she works. Yeah. I would like yeah. to know where she works. She works at an office. I know, I know who this is. So I can tell you she works in an office professional like environment. Okay. And it, I mean... If you're, I agree with John, if you're comfortable and you, yeah. and you, you know, as long as, I mean, you can't be in an office setting with your tits like full on out. I like, like that's, I that's just true. not. I mean, people do. Where, where, where's but, this place? <laughs> I mean, not full on out, but uh, like, you know, like they're. Yeah. And, and I think there's, a, a there's an unfair doubled standard for like, I can't wear things. Double D standard. <laughs> <laughs> my case it's like a You're like welcome. age standard uh it, there's a double standard for like i can't wear things that other women can look totally appropriate in yeah. because my boobs are so big so it looks inappropriate if i'm wearing something very similar to what they would be wearing and yeah. that's an unfair thing like it would just look like somebody wearing a tank top or with me it's like oh she's like a she's or whatever. Out, yeah. <laughs> yeah i got my so, cans same out. thing works for butts if you're wondering, same thing. So same what if, thing. Okay, us. what if a guy was wearing like skin tight, like Robert Plant jeans, and well, you could see, like, I mean, you could see his penis, like, in his pants, and you're his supervisor. You wouldn't be like, no, like I John Ham, for instance, on Mad Men did this. Go ahead. What would, what would you do in that situation? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. That's, that's one that's, of those episodes my... she has on that box set. <laughs> That's why I want to know because I mean, you, there there is a line. Yeah, if yeah. you have right. if you have giant, but like it just kind of exists that if you've got them out, like people are going to be distracted by that. People like reprimand yeah. you for it. So if it's extreme, I would say, you know. I mean, I get it if the tank top looks like a bra when she's wearing it. Exactly. But I mean, yeah. Exactly. So it's like it, I think there's a, I don't know I think there's levels to it. Have but if you, somebody came in with like skin tight, like boobs totally out, you'd be like, you're in an office, you can't do that. I feel targeted. <laughs> Have you ever been offended? Unfortunately, Mary, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been offended by another woman's boobs? Uh, Just say boobs. Appearance. That was also something that stuck out to me because no, I don't, and I no. don't, and, and I don't. Yeah. But there are women like that. There are. There, there are. are. We're in the South. People are going to be like, "Honey," and you know, Shouldn't get pissed yeah. at you. Bless your heart. Oh, bless your little heart. Your titties are just out and all over the place. <laughs> I love putting my hands out. I love it. <laughs> But, I do. Uh, but me and all my people, like people all our age, like if I see somebody like that, I'm like, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. That would never that would never bother offend me. me. Yeah. Well, there was a story not too long ago it was similar to this that we talked about on the show where a teacher was actually accused of dressing too provocatively. Too sexy. Too sexy. And too like sexy. parents too were. Too sexy. The dads, I guess, were hanging out and the moms were like, no, you can't do that. So, I, I mean, I guess it is like, you're right. It's rare. It's rare a guy's ever going to be like, Hey, you know, dude, you're dressing too hot, man. You know, but 
Yeah, I've been in situations where women have been told, you know, you got to cover, cover it up. up or do this or that. And it's, I, like I said, I mean, most of these things got to use common sense, but, you know, you find people taking it one way, taking it one way, you know. I think it all context. Like if you're using it to try to get a gain in the office or try to garner that's, that's attention. That's good. That's good. That's when it's. That's when it's good. Bad. <laughs> Uh-huh. Use that bad. power. Use it. I'm often told Shake I'm what too your mama hot. Gave you. <laughs> you are too hot for this. You're too hot, Mary. Get out of here. It's it's something I do. We're gonna pay you to leave. Yeah. That's what Get happens. Out. Here's twenty dollars. Leave. <laughs> okay. So, any final thoughts on the, the advice? What are we giving? Like, I, mean, I, I you know, I give her a free pass. John said, "Do you?" John said, "Come on, come as like a Hooters chick next day and make them." But you're you're Lee's Is that always even like the question. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't. After hearing John, I kind of like want her to just cover up for her. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Just for her creepy. sake. Yeah. Run, run, <laughs> run. Just remember, there's creepy guy. Well, there's all creepy guys you probably work with. So, I mean, you know, you just got to factor in. But Lee would probably say Lee's always big on to scams, as he told you earlier. You probably would encourage her. To oh, show more completely. cleavage, if and, you can use that class as a, action law, like a lawsuit against, like yeah, I would, I would, I would definitely entrap the ball. So oh yeah, yeah, you do like schemes. Yeah, yeah. for sure. He's he talks about this every advice. The boss, yeah. <laughs> the boss is ogling me on the, the I book at him. I would wear like a boob camera if that's a thing, like a little hidden thing. There, so it is we're now all wearing, we're all wearing, we're with like an eye detector, and then every time it clicks, it just sends an email to HR <laughs> with the picture. It's golden. You're good. You're good. All right, John, sum it up. What's, what's your advice for this lady? I'm saying if you're comfortable doing it, do it. Let it fly. Let it fly. There you go. Let it fly. Uh, there you go. If you want some advice from John, email us, bybpod at gmail.com, or go to the website, blameyourbrother.net, and there's a form you can, and please, and she said she'll be sending in more for you, so be looking forward to that. All right. So, all right, so if you want to send pictures with them? That's fine. Oh my, oh, how was oh my God, God. <laughs> John, cool. Uh, I'm done. We're about to give you some advice. <laughs> I'm Shut it. I'm gonna tell you honestly. I'm not. Anyway, there were pictures. There's pictures on Twitter okay. that we can show you later. But anyway, you know who it is. What are you talking about? The Let's person. pull it up now. Let's. Let's uh, log she in. said not no, to do that. Yeah. Know. See, come on. After, what are you doing? Know. What are you doing? <laughs> after we leave, you guys can just Google the word boobs as much as you want. Yeah. There's just endless boobs on no, the what internet. No. What are we? Yeah. What are we talking about? I'm sorry. I was off in another segment. <laughs> I mean, you got to say it's great to be a guy because there's literally boobs everywhere. I mean, you could just walk around a supermarket, the store, wherever you know. <laughs> uh-huh. But like John Hams are like one in a million if that's your thing. So you know. Uh-huh. That still blows my mind that John Hamm literally. You just keep mm-hmm. coming back to him, David. You're during Mad Men, during Mad Men, the literally production assistant says, "Do you have to wear underwear while you're filming these scenes?" Like it is crazy to me. I heard like, about that. He's just like, "No." Nope. Oh wait, it wasn't a plot on the show. It no, was like it's uh, him. Like, the guy. It's happened. just him. He's the plot. He's, yeah. There's <laughs> an it was undeniable like, it was like, chemistry between just, everyone. Does, he, and his does, does his like crotch get its own credit? <laughs> yeah, it does. John it Hamm. Should. John Hamm's crotch. <laughs> So Thanksgiving uh, to, to, to move on to a great segue. Thanksgiving was this past week. So did you have chicken breast? It's yeah, all about segues. Um, <laughs> so did everybody have a great? That's what it is. A segue. So, good segue. Did everybody have a great Thanksgiving? Of, Honestly, did you, John? I had the best of both worlds. I didn't have to travel and I didn't have to cook. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Oh. So did anybody cook this year? I didn't cook either. We you never cook. So many sides. Actually, my husband did most of the cooking, but we brought food over to. Uh, my dad's at my mom's house. Do you, I mean, do you dread Thanksgiving or do you love it? It's like my I favorite. Like it. It's my favorite I like holiday. It a lot. It's, it becomes, I like it more and more the older I get. Because yeah. it's like no obligate. You don't have to buy Thank gifts. You. you just get to like get yeah. together and drink a ton and yeah. eat a lot of food. I See? love that. Yeah. Simpatico right here. I say this and they look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, dude, it's the ultimate it's holiday. Great. It's too crazy. It's great. Broads are cooking for you. You're sitting watching football, drinking a beer. Broads are cooking. Best, man. No. Broads <laughs> are cooking. Where's the misogyny? I think there's a broke. It's broke. Can we get rid of that sound effect in anticipation of us? I mean, we can play it for everything we've said so far. Here you go. Misogyny alert. Misogyny alert. Misogyny alert. We actually, actually, my mom. I wish I had that in real life. (laughs) We can send it to you if you want it. You just send it. That would actually not be a bad idea. Like a button. We should start playing it on stage. If somebody talks to us after shows, so we're just like misogyny, misogyny alert. alert. Misogyny alert. How is that? Well, talk, talk about that. How's that after shows? Oh. Creepy dudes. Oh. 
Not like, but sometimes you get people who want to give you a lot of advice or want to give you a compliment that's like, hey, you are actually funny. <laughs> yeah. No, stop. Did anyone wait, 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 give you advice wait, wait, wait. about making subways during your show? <laughs> you know, have, have people given you advice about uh, what is the tough life of being a comedian and they're not a comedian? Like, Oh, yo. one guy, this guy, yeah. one time a guy, I had was, uh, I went on stage and um, somebody yelled, she got a fat ass. <laughs> Like super loud. Micah, I yell. apologized for that. And <laughs> let it go. Stop bringing it up. No. And then afterwards, this guy was like, it was like a really tough, tough situation. And then afterwards, this guy was trying to give me advice. And I was like, oh, do you stand up? And he's like, no, but I like watch a lot of stuff. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That happens a lot. That's, that's wild. <laughs> so. So like, but do you have like? Well, I think every guy thinks that they are a stand-up comedian. Yeah, that's my thing. I think every man is like on the inside. I'm a stand-up. Comedian. Oh yeah, if, and, and every guy thinks every woman who's an actual stand-up comedian is like not in funny. training. To yeah. Wow. So like what's him. the whoa whoa whoa? What's the opposite <laughs> of a misogyny alert? Because that is one right there. Every guy thinks they're a stand-up. Do you think you're a stand-up comedian? I do. Oh, yeah. Okay, you well. guys have a podcast. If I. <laughs> I take offense. Yeah. We're more like sit down comedians. <laughs> That's true. When I'm on Tinder, if a dude like starts off and is like, first of all, I'm hilarious, I will swipe no because I'm like, <laughs> I don't like hilarious people. So. No, I'm like, there's no way you're not. If you say this, like, no, well, you're not. Do, the thing they'll always say is if you tell somebody that. I, I would never do this with any other profession. No. But if you tell somebody that you're a stand-up comedian, they'll go, I've uh, always I've thought to that I that. could do that. And it's like, that's insult. That's an insulting thing to that's, say. Yeah. To be like, I, I really think I'd be good at what well, you do. I if did, an accountant said that to me, I'd be like, I don't know how to. I, mean, I, 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 did, do, I did do yeah. five minutes once. Like, yeah. Well, you're proud. No, I did. No, I did. I did. I did. I did. When does your special come out? He did five uh, minutes. I'm proud. I, I did you know, the segues are the hardest part. I did, I did, I did write half of his material, though. So. But, oh, and you're a joke stealer? Um, no, he was my writer. What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> you use writers, dude? I'm like he Carlos Mencia. Right, right, writer. Writer. <laughs> I think people that think that are, are dumb. Like, And I think people should... Honestly, I think people should try to do it like one time. It, it would be weird, right? Like if you're like, uh, if you think you could get up and play guitar and sing, it'd be like wild to think that. Like you walking up to musicians after a show, going, "Yeah, I've been thinking about writing some songs." It's like, dude, shut up. Stand comedian is is a craft. It takes work. It's it's like, yeah, everyone works with a guy in the office that thinks they're real funny, and they're just like, dude, you would you would bomb miserably up there. <laughs> so I respect the craft. Hey, I. I know. Yeah, props for you for doing I'm five one, minutes. One of a million. Even five minutes can be a long time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I can personally oh, yeah. say I've seen all three of you live, and I laughed oh. the entire time. Oh, thank, oh, thank, you. So. thank you. Thank you. Very funny. <laughs> I don't think you saw me. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you tell did. Them, Mary, tell them the story about... Uh, oh, about... <laughs> so people, oh, it happened the to me the thing. other day. A guy said that he knew me. and Okay, so people always... <laughs> Mm-mm. mix up me and Laura except so I get like <laughs> messages on Tinder and stuff where people be like hey I saw you open for Kyle Kinane at the basement east <laughs> and then I'll have Laura. to be like that's Laura and then I'll always screenshot it and send it to Laura so I like to imagine that like while I'm getting people telling me I'm so funny Laura's just getting my hate mail <laughs> <laughs> and then the other night just at Crying Wolf last night, this guy was like, "You're the comedian, Laura Peak." <laughs> no, I actually, I actually went to a show once because your name was on the bill, and then you never even got on stage. Oh, it was super weird. No. Oh, when yeah. was this? Laura no. was at that Third Coast Comedy Club, and I was like, I even went up to the guy afterward. I was like, uh, "What happened to Mary Oh, Jane was Rigger? it the? Was it? Uh-oh. And he's like, "She's not on the bill." Show when you had somebody else host it or something. That could have been it. Oh, I don't know. And I went up. I was like, "Where's Mary J. Berger? She's on the bill." Oh. He's like, "She's not on the bill." And I like pulled it up. I was like, "It's right here." Oh, and was it? It was probably. Was it like in June? Ah, uh, that's a long time ago. But okay. sure. Yeah. Yes, maybe. Maybe. I hosted a show, but I was out of town, and I produced it, and I had a guest host. Maybe that was it. That's probably it. Yeah. yeah. To but be thank fair, you for coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. To be I was fair, excited. I was excited. I've only met Micah before, and when I looked at your <laughs> picture, that the the what's her name, Sonya did. Holly. Oh, Holly, I'm sorry. Holly. I don't know why I thought Sonya. Uh, when, when Holly did the picture, I didn't know what you two looked like. I'd only seen like your Instagram pictures. I I, I saw one you had glasses on, uh, Mary, to be fair. So I was like, is that Mary there? And I didn't, Laura, I couldn't even find her for a long time. So I was like, maybe that's Mary on the right or I don't know. So, but 
Hey, people are weird. What are you going to say? I think that I, this poster, big so shout out. I love that Carton. poster. She's amazing. It makes me so f- excited about it. <laughs> also, this is a show where we all three are pretty much guaranteed to be there. <laughs> so. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so there are the quotation marks around pretty much. I'm going to see what I'm doing that night. <laughs> I said I would stop by. I can pop in. I'll, I'll pop, pop in. in. I'll do a how type. organized is your sock drawer? <laughs> I'll do a type five. Pop in. Drop there you go. Yeah, well, I know a couple of guys that said they I'll help you. I'll help you out, Mary. Oh, thank you for helping me. We'll see you afterwards. Yeah, I can thank do you so much. I can write down some jokes like, for you. Uh, talk about the show. Like, how, how do people get tickets? Tell me about it and all the specifics. Um, yeah, actually, I would definitely suggest if you want to come buy tickets sooner rather than later, you can go to thirdcoastcomedy.club. Um, How much are tickets? They are ten dollars a piece. Oh, that's a steal. Okay, that's yeah, a good you deal. Yeah, definitely come out. It's one of a t- it's one of a t- kind once in history. Situation. Okay, so how would you describe? <laughs> okay, so here's here's the question before we start wrapping up. How would you describe your comedy style, though? Each three of you, like, just give us a quick. How would, if you're an elevator pitch to someone? <laughs> I know. I know. They're like physically sweating. I think, like, I think oh. we should each uh, describe somebody else. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Okay, okay, good. That's good. All right, so do that. Just go down the line. Go to the to the right, right of you. Okay. And so, Laura, who around. do you want to describe? I'll describe. I'll describe Mary's. Okay. Mary is the queen of self-deprecation. She'll say that as much as I <laughs> she will. She's Don't amazing. She's me. amazing at it. She's a really good storyteller, uh, and. Like it's wacky. It's really silly, but also very like self-deprecating. Very like se- like just self-aware and really really funny. Is that good? That's great. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's I exactly I what I told her to say. <laughs> <laughs> Worked out perfectly. Micah, who do you want to describe? Oh, well, like, um, I mean, you gotta I think everyone should people. describe me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say John like <laughs> has <laughs> really, really good, good segues. segues. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> No, I would say Whew. Laura is like kind of a um, like a slow burn. Like she's she stands on stage, and at first you think she's monotone, but she's not. Like she's her writing is really really precise. Mm, cool. um, so it kind of like she really builds throughout the set, and she does a lot of observational stuff and um, shorter stories usually. But everything's really really well written and every word is just right to be like the funniest way to say it and she does have a definitely a silly side like really really precise good writing but also like the sense of humor that like a child or an old person would really like because there's like butts and farts and stuff (laughs) oh old people love butts and farts like they get it they get it (laughs) all right my turn to describe my pass (laughs) no. <laughs> All right, let's watch show. No, that girl's oh. got a thick ass. Is that what it was? <laughs> I fat, heard she's fat, a thick ass. ass. She's so. got a fat she's ass, guys. Fat. <laughs> um, Mike is great. She's hilarious. She's got. She does a lot of observational. She does some storytelling. She's got this bit I love where she talks about her kids and singing them songs, oh, and it's great. Stupid. Everything she does, and I'm not always a into hearing about people's kids, but Micah makes it very interesting. So she's wonderful. There you go. Yeah. What I mean, like I said, I've seen all, th- I mean, I've seen your stuff on YouTube, your stuff on you. I've seen Micah live and it's all very funny stuff. So people should go check it out Friday, December 28th. I think we'll be there. Right, Lee? If I'm in town, I'm not going to okay. miss it for sure. All right, for sure. And I don't know about John, but you know, he doesn't go see female comedians, but Hey, one day, uh, third coast comedy club. <laughs> they're, just, they're like comedians in training. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> What if we have our boobs out? Oh, yeah. Who's there? Well, December 28th. We're, we're dressing like that for the. Will you come? Okay, great. Hands yes, out. Yes, I will. Out. In every sense of the word. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm so sorry oh, I said that. Now I got another question that you said. How how much thought, honestly, honestly, because we were in a band and we gave a lot of thought about what we were going to wear, how much thought are you giving into what you're going to wear for this? A lot. Really? I'm going to think about it. I'm okay. going to definitely think about it. It's going to be important to me. Don't let anybody's opinion ideas. about wearing something too tight <laughs> interfere with, with your thought process. I'm going to wear a trash bag in John's honor. Yeah. There you go. I love it. I'm going to light myself on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of doing an album, let's light ourselves on fire. Just, <laughs> people have told me that I should set myself on fire. Yeah. John, I don't so think that's that. So that's so, yeah, it's wild. All right, let's wrap it up by doing a major key segment. Here we go. So let me give you a major key. Where is the key? There's another key. 
I want the key. Give us the keys. So let me give you a major key. And you really do have the key. Everybody, I mean, everybody stand up right now. Everybody. <laughs> I, got, I got the keys now. All right, so Major Key, it's where we take a lesson from today's episode. We put it up on the website. You can see all the past ones up on the screen right now. They're all, most of the time, they're John-inspired, you know. <laughs> you can just read some of them. I mean, you know, give Uggos a chance. That's John saying that on episode 114. Uh, episode 109, find a boyfriend, you know. <laughs> okay. Give Uggos a chance. <laughs> and Lee, episode 97. Never she- give up on your dream and fester. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's right, yeah. And uh, John on episode, or Lee on episode 97. Cheetos are for little kids and whores. <laughs> but anyways, we're... <laughs> hot hot Cheetos. Cheetos. Actually, somebody made a hot Cheeto turkey. I saw that. That was awesome. Okay. Wow. Anyway. Um, what do we got? I think tonight it's Let It Fly. Let It Fly. All right. That's fly. your major key. Wait, nothing about segues? No, it's a segue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need to work on that. <laughs> All right. okay. Let It Fly is your major key, episode 118. So we're about to wrap it up, but like I said, remember guys, December 28th, go see Laura, Mary J, and Micah record a comedy album at Third Coast Comedy Club, 10 p.m. Get there at 9 p.m. Have a couple of drinks, hang out, have a good time. Tickets available at thirdcoastcomedy.club. Please go check it out. It's going to be a fun time for everybody. Thank you so much. Do you guys want to plug your stuff personally? Where can people find you, stalk you, all that good stuff? We'll start with uh, Mary. Where, where you... I'm at Mary J. Berger, J-A-Y and B-E-R-G-E-R on everything. So There you go. Easy enough. Yeah, I'm at Micah, M-I-K-A-H, Wyman, W-Y-M-A-N, on all the things I'm on. I am uh, on find. Twitter. <laughs> I, am I? I said I gotta work on that. I, so. I am uh, <laughs> on Twitter. I'm at Laura K Peak P E E K, and on Instagram I'm Peakers P E E K T U R E Z. There you go. Well, go find them. Uh, I'm sure you'll be getting some autograph requests in the next couple <laughs> weeks from, from super fan Michael <laughs> Anthony Nicholas. But yeah, thanks so much for coming on. We had a lot of fun. Go check them out for sure. Go watch your stand up online. You'll definitely enjoy it. But hey. I uh, thank you most so much for hanging out with us tonight. Thank y'all so much. Thanks, Thanks for, so having much for having us. For having us. Sure. Yeah. So if you want to check out more about our show, go to blameyourbrother.net. That's where our website is. It's got all of our past episodes. It's also got articles by our friend Adam Cox from the UK who writes about sitcoms, pop culture, things like that as well. And you can go in there and catch all of our social media. It's it's Christmas time, so you need to go shop on Amazon. If you go do that. There's a link on the right side. If you click on it, it's our Amazon link. It'll take you back to Amazon. We get a small percentage of sales. So if you're buying a bunch of crap, think of us. Go to our website. Click on the link. It'll help us out. And don't remember, we're streamed every Thursday at RadioVegas.rocks. That's the best internet radio station in Las Vegas, RadioVegas.rocks. Go check it out, 24-7, 365 streaming. And you can contact us on the website as well. You can send us an email or even send us a voicemail if you are brave enough to do that. And John will definitely get those and, and, and help you with your life or maybe not. But anyway, <laughs> um, that's been it. Thank you so much, ladies. Great time. Loved it. Can't wait to see your comedy live. Can't get that vinyl get going. And uh, I guess without saying, Lee, is there anything else? Don't blame yourself when you can blame your brother. Sorry? This must never be seen by anyone. <laughs> has anybody seen this? Nobody has seen this. Welcome they to Memory of the Week. Today is Thursday, yeah, Thursday November 29th, the, the 333rd day of 2018. There are 32 days left in the year. On November 29th, 1890, the first Army-Navy game was played at West Point, New York. Navy defeated Army 24 to nothing. The 119th Army-Navy game will be played on December 8th at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, (laughs) Pennsylvania. Navy leads the series with 60 wins to Army's 51 wins. There have been seven ties. That is today's Memory of the Week. David, John, and Lee, back to you. What the hell is a gigawatt? (laughs)